three when he's better than half chances. He realistically could have walked off the pitch with a hat trick and the game being all over. He's the one who's who's got the goal in the end. But um, yeah, I, I think he's justified his selection tonight, Stan Collymore. Did we see all of Stan Collymore, the good and the bad at times? Yeah, it can or the be good and the frustrating. It can be very frustrating. That was the word I was going to use. Yeah. But <laughs> if you just look at that incident there, anybody apart. Not an average player will in that position. It takes an exceptional player, but it's frustrating that he hasn't finished it off. This uh, Arsenal's best chance in the first half. He knew it too, didn't he? I think it's sat up for him, to be fair, Richard. I don't think this. And this was the one that opened up. Yeah, it's a, it's a rare mistake by David Seaman. He spilled it, hasn't he? A strange night, though, didn't he, David Seaman? I thought he looked rather unsure. I thought he looked trapped. This is, All night. I mean, that's spinning, and to be fair, it bounces about a yard in front of him. Now, anyone will tell you who's trying to strike a ball first time, but when that happens, it's difficult. Timing is difficult. It's no more easy for a goalkeeper when it bounces like that, Richard. It, you've got to be really honed in to pick that up, and it's been raining there tonight. But this is Colin Ward at his best. Yeah, he impressed me with this because there was an incident just two minutes before where he's chased the lost cause, and he, he didn't get the benefit. Keon defended him very well, but he's chased that. He's fought his way in, he's got a great shot. He's unlucky not to score. Well, this is the incident this we'll is the talk about. Point, isn't it? I have to say that we three, particularly Barry and I, sat here and we thought penalty as soon as it happened. Both of us said penalty. Anybody watching that didn't say penalty, surely, but was it? Well, I mean, we could only judge Robbie Fowler's reaction. I mean, he said that he didn't think it was a penalty. I, I, it's strange, I've never seen a reaction from a player like that. He said to the ref that, that he didn't think it was a penalty. Yeah. I mean, I, th I found that amazing in the heat of a, of a game of this importance. At the end of the day, it's proved crucial because Liverpool have won as a result. Yes, it has proved crucial. Um, you know, I think the referee gave a, a decision here that we all thought was right. Um, and it was only Robbie's reaction that convinced us all. You know, he said he's lost his foot and slipped and went over. And I mean, it was so honest of him. But having given the penalty, what does Gerald Ashby do? Well, exactly. Does he, does he turn around and say, sorry, it's not a penalty, but I'm booking you, Robbie, for diving? Well, he, he has, for me, he hasn't even booked David Seaman. I don't want to see players sent off, but was it a case for him to be sent off? We haven't talked yet about Ian Wright's terrific finish there, either. No, well, it's a shame, because that was a terrific finish. That was that was Ian Wright all over. I didn't agree with Mark Wright's assessment. That, <laughs> that Kwame should have hooked it clear. I thought Wright was just brilliant. And you can, best, you can guess that they're not saying to the referee, did you add on enough time there? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Wright felt he should have had a penalty late on, didn't he? Yeah. They still have to go to Anfield. Arsenal there in third place, six points adrift. They've played a game more than either Liverpool or Manchester United. Newcastle there in fourth place, 11 points off the pace, but Kenny Dalglish is not giving it up. And virtually from the kickoff, Mikel Beck missed that opportunity. Should he have done better? I think he might do. He's a little weak, he's finished, after doing ever so well. But once again, this is one of the fixtures we highlighted, Richard down there in the relegation and the home team found it tough one nil down inside the first five minutes Alvanga yeah. Holland Pierre van Hoydonk played a big part in that he did well didn't he on the far post there yeah Curtis Fleming just gets caught underneath it he just steps back he did really well by not attempting to head it at all van Hoydonk very aware of Haaland but Barry Venison even from that point was fairly confident all evening it wouldn't finish like that there were plenty of chances and a few raw nerves, I would have thought, Barry. Yeah, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's a common denominator with uh, teams at the bottom that we do concede mm. an awful lot of goals and the defensive record so poor, there's always a chance there's going to be more goals and a chance to leak goals. But it's a great little ball in. It's Cox who's doing a dummy and he's picked them all brilliant. One's each and you would probably fancy Borough to go on and win the game there. Beck felt he should have done better earlier. He, you know, an awful lot better after that, wouldn't he? Great ball. For 1-1. Great ball from Cox. A hint of offside, perhaps? Well, we'll have a look at it. I think we've got, I've got it here. And we'll have a look at it in a bit, Richard. But uh, movement they admired. He came away from the halfway line. Neil Cox got involved two or three times. Look, you had a little look. That's very composed. Very composed. So that was 1-1. And still there were chances, as you would expect, really. Middlesbrough yeah, well, needed to win it, didn't they? Forrest presumably happier with the, if they could get a 1-1 out of it, that result. You take the three, you can bet your life on it. But uh, the way Middlesbrough go forward and play forward, uh, you know, they're not always going to get uh, keep them clean. This is a chance of the match. Van Hooydonk again in for Roy, who'd come on as a sub. That might prove to be a costly miss. 
They will. Season. They've had a good weekend for us, really. Yeah. They've got two very solid away results at Sunderland and Middlesbrough, but unfortunately, from their point of view, I think they need more. I'm delighted with the result, to be honest, <laughs> from a selfish point of view. And so is everybody else down there. Yeah. 1-1 one, one tonight. Keeps them both right in the mix. Forest go above Coventry. They've played a game more. In fact, they've played more than anybody else down there now. Just five left for Nottingham Forest. Still in the drop zone, but they go above Coventry. Southampton, of course, still propping everybody up. And how many of those teams do they meet, Andy? Four or five, is it? Five, I think, five, five, yeah. Yeah. They meet five of the bottom six above them. Yeah. Middlesbrough five just five outside. Them. 32 points now, and they've played 31. Then it's Sunderland and West Ham. And are we including Derby and Everton still and Blackburn Rovers? I think they're both out, Blackburn and Everton, but they've got, they've got, if they get no more points, they're down, I think. Simple as that. Yeah, but, I uh, think Everton and Blackburn, are, yeah. they're definitely not safe because they've only got 36 points, but again, Derby's the ones who are under more threat. Yeah, from a little Derby, bit like though. Newcastle and Arsenal, they're not out of it, but they are. They're not